I am super excited to be here. And so this morning we're going to have an, a great opportunity to take a look at change and take a look at the ways that you work with change and also have a little bit of fun. As you can see, you have handouts, so I'm natural to give you homework. So you have a little homework that we'll do in class, though. Nothing to take home and turn in. So I want to go over a little bit about where we're going to head today. So we're going to take a look at the experience of change. We're going to understand some awareness around change. We'll look at change processes. And we'll have some conversations and we'll collaborate about change. So you'll have a chance to talk with someone next to you to talk this through. So I hope that you talk a lot, even though it's early. And then you'll also come up with a personal action for change. And so I have a bicycle in here. And you know, bicycling is a lot like change because sometimes you might get a flat tire. Sometimes you don't know. You have to set plans for what direction you're going to go. And other times, no, you might get in a little accident and you have to figure out how to move through that. So, but the bottom line is it, that you have to keep going and continue riding just like you have to roll through change. So I want to walk through a little bit about the progression of bicycles. <laughs> how many people have ridden a bicycle? How many people have a bicycle right now? And how many people still ride? That's great. That's great. And maybe I'll see you on the trails because I'm riding. I live around this area and I'm out on the trails all the time, actually almost every day. So there I even are. Had what? I even had that. <laughs> and I had to walk and bike home. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Did you get very injured? Very injured. Oh no. <laughs> I actually just had one myself a little bit about a month ago and I'm still in physical therapy getting okay. better. But I got back on my bicycle. <laughs> So I actually got on my bicycle and rode myself to Tai Chi because I thought, oh, no problem. I, I talk about riding bikes all the time and change, so let me get in an accident. Let me go to Tai Chi. <laughs> and it was there. They looked, you know, Tai Chi is a little bit relaxing and centered and focused, so I figured I'd better go there, although I had all these skid marks all over my jacket. <laughs> and my bicycle was like click, 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 click. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, let me keep riding. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> on that seat, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> it totally was. In fact, the, the, the denial was so strong okay, okay. that, <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't even, <laughs> I, I, I was going to a conference the next morning, and so I, or the next day, and I actually just went anyway. And it wasn't until five days later my friend said, oh, maybe you ought to get checked out. <laughs> and they were like, yes, yes, now you need to go to physical therapy. So you're right, denial. But avid about moving through change. So how many of you had a big wheel? Yeah, yeah I, I, didn't, I didn't have a big wheel. I, was, I just missed out on that one. But I did move into the tricycle. And then there were the training wheels, you know, and all the cheering that goes with that. You know, come on, you can do this. And then. My favorite, the banana yeah. seed bike. <laughs> I mean, I had the, the bomb of the banana seed. It was a leopard skin banana seed bike. I thought it was great. I missed the part, though. Well, I don't have, oh, I missed the part. I did not have the little, what, what are those, the little, tricycle. yeah, the, I mean, I had the tricycle, but I didn't have the, what are those, streamers. Oh, yeah. yeah, I didn't have that. I missed out on that. I had two brothers, so I couldn't do the streamers, you know. <laughs> And then 10 speed bike, and then I had a boyfriend that decided I needed to have a mag wheel bike, so he got me a mag wheel bike, so it was really tough. And then this is one of my current bikes, actually, and it's a mountain bike. And so, I mean, it's gone through a lot of changes, too. <laughs> it's about 25 years old, and so <coughs> still moving strong with that. So, but change in bicycling, you know, they, they go together. And I know a lot about cycling, and that's because it was one of the ways that I used or move through change and it was after an opportunity that I had lost my job and kind of lost my identity and I used the cycling to work through it. So in 2012 I biked 1600 miles in a year and 2013 about 1037 and then in, in 2014 it was around just only around 1200 so it's just kind of these different variations of cycling but I got through that as I was really inspired by one of my friends who had cycled all the time and they said, you know, this is how I deal with stress and this is how I find peace. And he cycles every day and so after 4,700 miles, I've been on my bike, I think, every day. 
But see, with the cycling and change, sometimes things can go really well and you're moving through and it's peaceful and it's all that freedom. I mean, that's what I remember about cycling. And so, except for when Sammy the dog appears. <laughs> the neighborhood dog whose bark is much worse than its bite. And so I'm cycling along on my banana seat bike and all of a sudden, Sammy breaks three. And he's running toward me and running toward me and it's like shark week and he's jumping <laughs> at me. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> Sammy got me. <laughs> and so I tumbled and I fell. But as we talked about, you just get up and you get back up and ride on. And that, that's it. It's just you take a pause and you move forward. And I still have the scar on my leg over here. It looks like a little guitar from Sammy. But those are some of the things as you move on and you move on through cycling, through change, and they roll together. So, well, whoops, let me back that up. I was going to say, let's take a look at some of the things that we've already experienced in change. I, this is actually at one of my friend's house. They still use this. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't, they, it does, because the technology doesn't match, because you can't yeah. do, it doesn't read the rotary dial anymore. But you can still listen. And so her husband just chooses to listen that way. <laughs> and so, because that's just his choice. I mean, I, you know. This is my first cell phone. Anybody wow. have one of these? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, it's so heavy. I can't remember. You know, where did you put this? <laughs> or even if you had a bag phone. So we've moved through change. And so part of this is to realize is that even though in a lot of ways we resist change, we're still moving through it each and every day. Let's take another look. Well, we've got the transformation of TV. And so. And if we move forward, I mean, I don't have one of these, but sometimes you may have a monitor for your animals. And so you can just do a little conversation with your animals while you're at work. And so <laughs> there's a trans, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't do that, but <laughs> we have personal cell phones, no. <laughs> but it's just how we're communicating is different and how we're even, um, how we're even looking at TV. And actually, I just saw a stats, stat the other day is that a lot of people in a much younger generation, they don't watch a physical TV. They see it on all the other platforms. They don't watch it on the TV. So that's something to kind of think about. And of course, there's plenty of people that, pro and probably all of us may have streamed down a movie on a tablet or wherever we're at. So it's just some of the changes we're experiencing. How about music? That's certainly changing. Okay, and, I, and when I first started doing this presentation, I thought, oh, it'd be great. Well, let me bring a record, you know. You know, Captain and Tennille and stuff like that. <laughs> but the thing that's, that's changing is really, we're going back to vinyl. Yeah. <coughs> so I'm kind of. I was going to say that because I was totally surprised. I have a son that's 21. And he actually went and bought a vinyl record. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a vinyl. I mean, they were a little fancier now, not as bulky. Yeah. Oh, that's just amazing how, and we just took all of the albums and gave them away. And I said, like, you should have kept those. And I didn't know you were going to keep coming around and wanting those again. So now we go to these stores to get albums. Doesn't that feel bad? It's like, you have to buy all this because I had it already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I feel the same way. I actually just had. Got, I just received my 45 collection back because I had someone storing it for me and I just got it back and I'm like, oh, well maybe I'll have to test it out on some, on you know, one of those turntables. So, but I guess because of the quality of sound is so much better, so it's kind of moving back to that. And I, you know, and actually for last cr Christmas, well you never know what people are doing with the vinyls and so I, you know, I actually got a bowl made out of a uh, vinyl. <laughs> Yeah, my sister got me one of those, and it was Cindy Lauper, of course. Girls just want to have fun. And so, you know, all the different ways you can use vinyls. And uh, so that's one way that we're changing through music. And it kind of demonstrates that we are continually changing, you know, and we're adapting to change. So, and some, you know, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's difficult. So let's take a look at the Jetsons, though. I mean, they were really ahead of their times. Because, I mean, the, or the cartoon was from 1962 to 1988. And take a look at the progression of what they were thinking about during that time. 
I mean, then we have Skype. <laughs> no more than Apple Watch. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and there's the Roomba, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, you wanted a Rosie? <laughs> yeah, they are coming. <laughs> so very forward thinking, and here we are, and here we are. So, and it, it's kind of exciting, you know, to think how forward thinking they were with the Jetsons, but then how this continually progresses. So as we're having these ideas of what would be helpful to us, you know, and what, you know, how could we change and adapt, and who knows, maybe we'd be the next inventor or something else. So. So let's take a look at some of the models for change for individuals. The first thing to consider is when you're thinking about change, is it your stage of concern? And that would be, how does it impact me? What is it? And how does it impact us? And that would be a question to ask if you're having change in an organization, or even if you're having a change in your family at a larger scale. What's your main impact? You know, what, what's happening? And then how do you work through that? Then we'll take a look at transition theory some of the emotional stages of change, and then we'll work through a simple change process, the ride of change. So Kurt Lewin has this model of change. And first, you have to unfreeze a situation. Then you have to move, and then you refreeze it. So in the unfreeze, is you're taking a look at the different forces that are driving the change and also resisting the change. And so that's where you have to kind of unfreeze. So let's try and think of an example of, well, I know for myself, I had a, I trained and I do photography with, I started with film photography. And so switching over to digital was quite a, a jump for me. It took me a long time. So when I was in that unfreezing phase, I would carry both cameras. I would carry a film camera and I would carry a digital at the same time. And I would be doing the comparisons and trying to unfreeze what works better on this one. So I was learning how to move through that. And then it's the moving and the taking action and making the changes. And then I'd only carry one. I'd carry the digital. And I'd kind of stay and move through that. And that's the same as far as when I refreeze the permanent change is I don't use the film photography or f cameras any longer. I know that's probably an older example, but I really did have a struggle making that change. And it's just interesting, even the change that I make, because I still carry, um, I show my photography at times, so I carry two cameras. I carry my regular telephone ca or my camera phone and then also a regular point and shoot camera. So I still have that going on. I still am not letting go, but it's also, <laughs> it's also still that balance of making the move and the change. I haven't made that leap yet to, well, I have a DSLR camera, one of the larger ones, but I still am not in the mode of carrying one of those, and I'm still in a change process there. So unfreeze, move, and refreeze, simple process of change. Then we have to look at the emotional part of it. So you have the past and you have the future. So this is similar to a grieving process until you kind of get to that new normal. So first you're in that denial, which we talked about <coughs> denial already. Then you have that resistance. Then you start exploring a little bit further. And then finally you make that commitment. So it's also a combination of focusing on the environment and yourself, that kind of balance. So moving through the process, just like grieving, denial, resistance, exploration, and then you finally make that commitment to your new normal. So me, when I made that change to stick with a digital camera, you know, that was a big, you know, change in commitment. And then you have the transition part. So some people have probably heard about Bridges' transition theory, and so, First, you have the endings. You say goodbye, you let go, and you lose some of the sense of your identity. Then you have the neutral zone. And you have to spend some time there. You look at what's going on. You ask, OK, you know, that was my previous identity. Where am I at? I'm in this space. Just kind of an empty ground. And it takes, takes time. Each person is different. Um, and it's uncomfortable. But you're also exploring. So what, 
what direction do I want to go? So if you were changing careers or doing something of that nature, you're exploring. So where, where do I want to go? Or if you're going back to school and coming back to Aurora University, of course, and taking a look at things, you're going to explore. What do I want to do with my career? What are the options there? Then you move forward. You have new beginnings, and this involves a lot of communication. Because when you're changing, you have to take a look at, it impacts you personally, but it impacts everybody in your life. So, and I'll use that example of school. So when you make that decision and you're making a career change, I'm, you know, maybe you go back to school. And that changes your schedule and your time and who's, how much time you get to spend with people in your life. Or when you're changing jobs. I mean, I'm actually in this transition part right now. I'm moving into a new role over at um, a different school and I'll be working downtown further. So I'm in this, I'm getting into this place of I'm starting to say goodbye to what I've been doing recently. Now I'll be stepping into that neutral zone of what does this look like? I live out here in the suburbs, so then it'll be the transition of understanding moving down to commuting downtown. I'm not moving downtown. Adapting to that, I get to adapt to the train culture. I'll have to make sure I don't sit in anybody's seat because I know that irritates people, you know, and that's just, you know, one of those change pieces. And then embracing what this new, you know, new endeavor looks like and seeing how other people's co people cope with me and I actually have to let other people know I'm going to be a little crabby in this transition. So, and just the adjusting, you know, routines that I had before will change. So, sitting in transition and paying attention to that. So as change happens, you want to take a look at your identity. And so maybe, you know, as, as our roles change, we have to take good care of ourselves for our own understanding and the adjustments. So maybe, you know, maybe you're no longer a daughter or granddaughter or niece and that's, you know, if something happens and changes in your family. Or maybe you're not in, maybe you're in a certain role, you change Maybe, let's see, maybe you're a podiatrist, right? And then you switch over to financial services. And so that's kind of a different change that, you know, that's a different change in identity. So some of the processes and work experiences you have are similar, but who you are is identity shifts. So it's tricky, and there's so many levels to shift and cope with with the different societal norms. And it's important when you're going through change, and especially around identity, to surround yourself with a lot of social support. So let's move. Anyone have an example of when they had a change with identity and how that shifted for them? You're nodding your head. Do you want to share? I, I was with the company for 29 years when they decided <coughs> to move my job. OK. didn't just affect me. It was a huge change for me because I think you mentioned earlier, when you have a job, it is your identity, especially mm -hmm. being there for so long. And that was, you know, there was a bit of a shock. Like, what am I going to do? Who am I? I mean, just all of that. And then there's the family, you know, my two daughters, my husband, and how is it going to affect them? So it was uh, quite an interesting time for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, and it is in my experience, too, as I talked about how I got into the cycling, as I had lost my position and I thought, I was so dedicated to that. Who am I now? And then, even, and then that's the whole idea of moving out of position, but also then, then you take a look at your job isn't your entire life. It's not your entire identity. And so, but just paying attention to how different pieces of your life changes and how that impacts your identity and being, you know, and knowing who you are. But that's really a great example, so thank you for sharing that. Because it is one of those things where you take this shift. I, I have done some research on transitioning mid-career mid professionals and also into retirement and how people move into that space of who am I now? <coughs> you know, who am I to myself? Who am I to organizations? Who am I to the people around me? So, yes? I'm going through that okay and, uh, it's is how you the change you have in mind how it's going to affect the family is huge and especially when it's in company 
Mm -hmm. Due to either resources or cultural or whatever. But I grew up in Iran. And mm -hmm. I'm tired of the have been thinking. And now that I have at the age that I, I feel like I may have 20 more years, 30 more years to live, I want to live the way I want. Yes. And not according to my kids and not according to my husband. So, right. Um, it's been a conflicting point, and that's so hard to get over and get it resolved and be objective mm -hmm. to see both points of view. That's, that's really difficult. Really yes. Difficult. And it, yes. Takes, it takes learning, and, and, and I, I don't know how it's going to end, but right. we are at the, <laughs> at the point. Well, I, I think that's a really great example because it's a mindset shift. And that at certain points, whenever you're going through your lifetime, in certain age categories, you're gonna wanna be paying attention to certain things around your lifespan. You know, whether it's family focus, whether it's career focus, whether it's, you know, retirement focus. The thing with the relationships, it's a careful dance. And so what I'm doing is I'm making this change for myself. I have to manage some of the expectations. And so, these are the expectations I have for myself, and then let's have a conversation about what are the expectations you have for me, and how can we meet in the middle as I make this change and we still maintain our relationship. So it is to, that's how I'm kind of seeing it and trying to have but those they important don't even see it. They No, I agree. Like, <laughs> wrong, and I'm right, and I no. <laughs> I mean, I. So I almost have a chip on my shoulder, you know, it's just like, it's going to be done. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. I mean, I do. I think, and I will put this in the categories that sometimes, well, well, I don't know. I don't even want to put it sometimes with, um, for women taking care of other people. Yeah. That's a really hard dance as far as that, having that conversation. Like how do we partner, how, and even with you know, friends, if you've been the strong one, when I've been in situations where I've always been the strong one and then something happens to me and I'm kind of knocked down a little bit. <laughs> and it, it's that rolling with changes in identity and expectations. So I'm still navigating, you know, and I think that everybody is. Don't you, I mean, don't you agree? Whenever you're making a change, you have to continue to navigate and say, Okay, we're getting in a lot of conflict now, so now let's see how we can meet a middle ground so everybody is happy. So yeah. good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you. But I do see a lot of, um, you know, I do see, even when um, a friend of mine, her husband decided to go from business into, to be into medical, and that was a huge shift. So he went, to, went on to medical school mid-career, and so that really uprooted their entire family and so, you know, that's a lot of conversation, you know, and a lot of change and negotiation and expectations. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, no, I think it's great. <laughs> because, because the. Perfect for